time to fly. Manipulating the brain to change your reality with or without your consent. Fiction is quickly becoming reality. This ape has an implanted neural link that reads his brain to induce him to play ping pong with a joystick. One of the things the neural links allow Pager to do is to play his favorite video game, Pong. To control his paddle on the right side of the screen, Pager simply thinks about moving his hand up or down. Everyone is worried about the privacy of their data in their iPhones or in their computers, but this is nothing compared to the privacy of your own thoughts. The implant is kind of like this little puck of the secret sauce active electronics, and the electrodes are these tiny little flexible threads that each, at the very end, have multiple little electrodes that if you get those electrodes next to a neuron, they can record what that neuron is doing. I'm excited for the robot to help a human patient restore someone's motor function that they lost. That would be super cool. All right. Um, the, the beeps you're hearing are real-time signals from the neural link in Gertrude's head. She's had the implant for two months. Yeah. We're at the beginning of a new era with neurotechnology. These technologies to read brain activity are starting to be generated now. Uh, you can start to decode uh, the images that people have in their minds if you scan them with uh, uh, magnetic resonance uh, scanners in the hospitals. No? Demonstrate, this is me with the power on. And this is me when I turn it off. Uh, you won't be able to read that, it's shaking too much. So it's almost an instantaneous reaction. I can't control this. The brain, it's still largely unknown. It's a continent full of uh, neurons. There's a hundred thousand million neurons inside the brain and they're connected in impenetrable jungles. So, um, so we belong to the generation that's finally entering this new continent. The most powerful computer in the world isn't nearly as intuitive as the one we're born with. So there, there's this enormous mystery uh, waiting to be unlocked. In the brain right now, in this time in history, it's one of the uh, biggest challenges of humanity. So uh, the most important thing that's going to happen once we uh, understand the brain is that we will understand our mind from the inside scientifically for the first time. Vous devez arrêter cette recherche insensée. Cette créature ne se contente plus des cerveaux de tous les ahuris qui vous regardent à la télévision. Il me semble évident que que nous ne pourrons plus travailler ensemble. Vous m'envoyez ravi, mais je ne vous laisserai pas continuer vos méfaits. Je vais révéler l'existence de ce monstre si je vous conseille de le faire disparaître. When we take control of the brain of a mouse and put in uh, these visual hallucinations, the mouse doesn't cannot tell the difference between what we put in and what the, he thinks. So uh, if we use new technology in humans, in the brain, the person will uh, interpret that as his or her own 
decision. Y volvemos a nuestro país porque Chile podría convertirse en el primero en el mundo que regule legalmente los pensamientos de las personas. Claro, se trata de una iniciativa pionera que busca resguardar los llamados neuroderechos. I'm a brain rights activist. I'm, I'm advocating for the uh, installation of these neural rights in the uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights. In fact, this should be the first human right because if you don't have the right to be yourself, why do you need the rest of the human rights? Now you're going to tell us where you put Mr. Drucker's security. He won't find it in my head. I told him to hide it so I wouldn't know where it is. We'll see about that, won't we? Yeah, we will. Get in here. I'm talking to you from a building that is right next to another building, which is a national monument in the U.S., because it's the place where the Manhattan Project was started. The physics department at Columbia University built the first atomic reactor in the world in the basement of that building, and that led to the development of atomic weapons, and that changed the course of history. But the same physicists that were involved in the weapons were the first ones to demand international regulation of atomic energy. I saw them move. What you see is real. What's done is done and what I've done is right. I grew up in Madrid in the center of the city, playing soccer in the streets. My father was a lawyer and my mother uh, a pharmacist and she had a laboratory of clinical analysis. I earned my first uh, money looking th through the microscope to uh, count uh, blood cells. In fact, I have my old microscope is right here <laughs> behind me. In spite of the heroic efforts of psychiatrists and neurologists with mental or neurological diseases, they're treating their patients with their hands tied behind their back because they uh, don't have the right tools and or the, the knowledge to try to understand what is the, the basic problem. So uh, I thought that rather than treating patients, it would be better for me to spend my life uh, doing basic research, trying to understand how the normal brain works. I would like to show you a 1400 gram brain. It's a beautiful specimen. You can use brain-computer interface to connect people to databases, for example. Everything that we use computers for, in principle, uh, you could use to augment uh, uh, the cognitive or physical abilities of people. Instead of using a trackpad or a mouse, you just wear a wristband, and by moving your fingers, or even without moving, by only thinking about moving your finger, you'll be able to move a mouse around or to operate an avatar, for example. So for example, if I'm cooking and I'm kind of pulling some noodles out of a box, the interface could ask me, would you like to start boiling the water? This is great, by the way. I mean, you could you can imagine we can reinvent humanity, but we have to choose together what type of human do we want to be. I don't watch uh, brain science fiction. Uh, I hate it. Uh, it's a little bit like, uh, imagine that you are uh, an epidemiologist and you're working on COVID. The last thing you want to do when you get home is to watch movies about pandemics. This, and obviously they're doing this to make money <laughs> because they want to make people scared so that they can actually uh, have more people watch their movies, but uh, it's not true. There will be a time in the future, I don't know when, maybe in 10 years, in 20 years, when humans will be able to uh, augment themselves with neurotechnology, uh, cognitive and mental augmentation. And this has to be ruled and legislated 
under the universal principle of justice to prevent the uh, humanity that has two types of people, people that are augmented and people that are not. and technology have always been on the side of helping humanity and neurotechnology will be the same thing why should we be different no i think so we have to make sure that uh that the the science fiction it's not dystopian but utopian lahayam lahayam is this your canoe? I need to go downriver. Naika, Ladua. Naika, Ladua, Kikwili, Tsuk. Wik Naika, Kladua, Kikwili, Tsuk. We're going to have uh, a new humanity. Uh, we will be able to interact. Uh, without words, by thinking, and uh, that can help us uh, uh, maybe talk to people that speak a different language. Uh, that would help us to understand each other better. You know, uh, I don't know about you, but in my experience, 90% of conflict comes from misunderstandings. So if you understood the other person, maybe there wouldn't be, <laughs> there'd be much less conflict. I was ta talking about conflicts between countries they're really conflicts between the leaders of those countries. So maybe you can get those brains connected so that they don't have any misunderstanding and they finally realize that there are ways to work together that they both win. <laughs>